People around the world celebrate St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. For some, it's a day to celebrate Irish culture with dyed green beer and clover-clad Celts. For others, it's a holy time to remember the last day of a legendary saint. But who is the real St. Patrick, people often ask, and what do we really know about his life? Well, David Bentley Hart includes St. Patrick in his book, The Story of Christianity, A History of 2,000 Years of the Christian Faith. And Hart begins with the more historical, factual data of Patrick's life on page 119. Christianity, however, Catholic Christianity, persisted and gradually conquered the conquerors. Undoubtedly, the most famous representative of the old Roman Christian order in the age of barbarian hegemony was St. Patrick, the 5th century apostle to Ireland, the son of a Roman Briton deacon he was captured at the age of 16 by Irish raiders and endured six years of slavery before escaping and returning to Britain. He journeyed to Gaul and there was made a priest. Ultimately, though, inspired by a dream, he resolved to return to the country of his captivity to preach the gospel. In 432, he had the opportunity to do just this when he was commissioned to replace the beleaguered Bishop of Ireland, Palladius. In Ireland, Hart continues, he traveled widely, made disciples, and baptized. His was not the first mission to Ireland, certainly, but it was the most ambitious. Irish kings were sometimes indulgent, sometimes hostile. By Patrick's own estimate, he and his followers were taken captive a dozen times, and on at least one occasion, he was bound in chains, and his life was frequently in danger. As were the lives of his disciples, he provoked the enmity of the Druids, naturally, but ultimately he counted kings and chieftains among his converts. He did not, of course, eradicate the old religions of Ireland. But if any man can be said to have converted an entire nation, Patrick would be that person. Okay. So as you can tell, this section is factual. He's covering what a lot of the people would assume is safe to say, that we know that we have maybe historical documents to back it up. Uh, consider this like the safe telling of the historical St. Patrick that we know. But then the next page on page 120, he has a different vignette that's entitled The Defeat of the Druids. And this is a, a, you can tell it's a different section because he changes the font as well as the color of the font. So it goes from like a Roman numeral, or excuse me, a Roman type font to that of a, an aerial, and then also a black font to like a grayish font. And what he's doing is he's distinguishing the first telling, which is more of like the historical section in the Times New Roman font. But then in this aerial font, it's more of like the, the dreamlike or the, the mysterious or legendary, uh, the myth. So Hart writes on, Far better known than the actual life of St. Patrick are the innumerable legends that sprang up around his name in the centuries after his death, which is not, of course, to say that all of these legends are merely legendary. This is the story, for instance, of how the chieftain Dichu raised a sword to slay the Christian missionary only to find his arm frozen above his head until he professed obedience to Patrick. Or the tale of how Patrick came before the idol of the demon god Cum Crouch, a gold-plated pillar to which infants were regularly offered, and reduced it to dust with a single touch of his crozier. Perhaps the most colorful of these legends concerns Patrick's contest with the Druids in 433, early in his mission. Hearing that the kings of Ireland had gathered at Terra, the seat of the high king, for a great feast day, Patrick went there hoping to gain a hearing. As it happened, the royal assembly coincided with Easter. By royal decree, all fires were to be extinguished throughout the land until the sacred fire had been lit at Terra, a decree that Patrick and his disciples defied. On Easter Eve, they went to the top of the hill of Slain, across the valley from Terra, and lit a great paschal bonfire at midnight. Supposedly, the Druids of Terra 
exerted all their magical powers to put out the flames, but were unsuccessful. Then, in the morning, Patrick led an Easter procession across the valley. The Druids, it is said, use magic incantations to cause an impenetrable cloud of darkness to descend upon Terra and over the surrounding valleys. However, when Patrick challenged them to disperse the darkness again, they suddenly found themselves unable to do so. Patrick, though, chased the darkness away with a single prayer. Nor does the tale end there. Locru, the chief of the Druids, it continues, rose into the air and began flying around the brow of Terra. Patrick merely knelt in prayer, and the hapless heathen tumbled out of the sky to an abrupt demise at the foot of the hill. As one might expect, the Ard Rai, the High King, was persuaded by this to allow Patrick to preach the faith in all the lands of Ire. It is a winsome tale, despite Locru's grisly end, but at the end of the day, it is hardly more remarkable than the unquestionably true story of a single man, with no great worldly resources at his disposal, succeeding by a life of sheer unwavering devotion in changing the faith of an entire people. So as you can tell, this really illuminates the fact of, of Hart's approach to, to the symbolism of story, I've termed it, where he talks about the historical, or what he says, the actual life of St. Patrick on page 119, but then he follows it up with the, the innumerable legends that sprang up around his name in the centuries after his death. And this is just one or a couple of tales that, that were, uh, were connected to the surmounting legend or the canon of St. Patrick's life and the meaning for which he represented. So really, he uses this legendary to, to get at the essence of who Patrick was, or really the spirit of what he embodied. But then also, it, it touches upon the transforming element of time, where he, these stories represent like the fringes of the garment, like we covered in the symbol of, uh, symbolism of story video last time, where this mythological type of tale is is really pushing the edges of what we are familiar with with Christendom and the, the faith and beliefs and the tenets of the walk with Christ, where it expands us into another realm of potential, the limitless realm of possibility. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I know that there's a lot of other rituals surrounding Patrick that I'm not getting into in this video, like why does he have the, the clover as a symbol? Well, much later on than when Patrick lived in the 5th century, there was the, the, the stories of how the, the three leaves of the clover were drawing out the Trinity and how he used this symbolism to, to explain the Trinity of God pointing to the center. So, of course, the question is, did he really say that? Did he really exemplify the clover and the symbolism of the Trinity? Well, one thing we do know, that with very little resources, he was able to captivate the heart of an entire people. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Celebrate responsibly. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, click the like button. If you would like to be notified of future videos, click the subscribe button, as well as that bell notification. There's a lot of ways to support this channel. You can find them in the description below. Until next video.